what is a yoga teacher today? Because as you said, yeah. all these weird confrontations of exercise and spirituality and Indian yeah. culture and British culture and American cultures in the yoga scene today, whether people like it or not, you know, even yeah. if they've never been there. Like, what the hell is it? Hmm. Yoga teacher. Or been you- a yoga teacher, yoga, what is it? Like, what the hell is it in the modern context? No, yeah. there's not one answer to that, but I'd like to hear yeah, yours. Yeah, it's a huge one. We could chat all for the rest of the week about it, couldn't we? But, um, and you must stop me from doing that. But, <laughs> um, so, okay, I would, I, I would separate yoga from yoga teachers, two separate questions. And I'll probably tackle for me what would be the slightly more manageable one, which is yoga teacher. But I'm happy to come back to the yoga bit. Because I, um, I have asked, I ask myself that all the time. So ever since I started teaching, I check in with myself and ask, I mean, just naturally, periodically, why do I teach? Um, How does that fit in with what I believe is yoga? But also, um, I evaluate my teaching myself all, all the time. So I'm always sort of plugging into that question. And what I found is that, um, well, as a, as a yoga teacher, it, it, it's evolving because I am. So it's that kind of Buddhist pretext, who I am yesterday isn't who I am today. So there's a bit of that going on. In that as I'm evolving as a person, my relationship to yoga will also be evolving. So it's not necessarily fixed. But in terms of the dynamics, um, definitely it's, for me, yoga teacher is about general ethics of teacher which I'm quite strong on, and I take that as a very um, serious and heavy responsibility. So guidance, inspiring, educating, imparting, even a bit of safeguarding. I'm, I you know what, I would say it's interesting, let's just break those down, because they're actually different things, aren't they? I don't think most teachers realise this, that you're teaching, mm-hmm. you're guiding, you're facilitating, you're inspiring you're a role model like they're actually they're actually sort of related but but not the same like I realized this the other day that when I'm teaching I'm teaching several things I'm teaching the content but in the manner with which I'm teaching I'm also teaching and in who I am in the teaching uh, and that's way more important than the content actually I'm always I'm also teaching so there's at least three or four levels that I'm teaching at and some of those may be hey you know what it doesn't really matter what I say but what matters is I convey enthusiasm and that person then goes away and practices a lot. It's not that I've particularly given them a new piece of information. They just go, oh, shit, yeah, yoga's great, or whatever the thing is, you know, embodiment in my case. So and I, I don't think we break those down enough because I, I think they're worth separating out a little bit. Yeah. And, you, yeah, you've nailed it for me there. The, um, it's the name of your podcast book, An Empire, Embodiment. <laughs> um, embodiment Sandwich. You may know me from such movies as. <laughs> no, you're quite, quite incredible, quite unique. And, um, um, but because um, if it's not too much of a segue, so the mindfulness bit, so just for your listeners' views, I've um, trained in mindfulness, which always would have felt a bit of a weird thing for me to say, but but but, but bear with me on this anyway, because uh, I don't know, meditation mindfulness to me is just a state and, and you know, to say you're training and delivering it. However, uh, it does connect to the yoga teacher part because my um, relationship to more formal practice and meditation has been all over the place for years and um and i've tried um not as many yoga teacher trainings but i've done some meditation teacher trainings or courses and and mindfulness and i've, I've not got on with any of them and there's a but coming up unlike the yoga so yoga just seemed to i don't know um be a natural fit for me personally um the meditation has always felt like work effort a bit contrived you know tr- trying to make something happen until uh, two and a half years ago, I uh, had a chance encounter again. Mm, is it chance? No, whatever. Um, with a lady in a um, some sort of well-being festival, um, and um, yeah, she's this, this lady who you wouldn't spot her in a crowd. Um, just this sort of petite, like brown hair lady, someone you know behind a table. You know, someone like like you might see at a village fair. This is no disrespect to the lady I'm talking to because I'm about to big her up. But I had a conversation with her um, prior to finding out she was a a mindfulness um, tutor, supervisor, trainer. And I left that conversation feeling something I'd never felt before. And I didn't know what it was at the time, but on reflection it was, 
heard. I felt like I had been heard and listened to more than it's quite this is quite a big claim, isn't it? Than I had been by anyone else in my life. No partner, no family member, no friend had ever heard me uh, or engaged with me in the way that I had in this sort of 10, 15 minute chat that I'd had with this lady at some wellbeing event. So I followed up and I, I messaged her and that's when I found out what she did for a living. And then I asked if, she, you know, if, if um, and, and I'd been put off by sort of mindfulness up until this point. I'd done these courses with horrendous teachers. I mean, they're just, you know. What, what makes a horrendous mindfulness teacher? Yeah. Well, they're angry inside. They okay. don't, and they don't the get it. anger, that's common yeah. in this world. Yeah. 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 And then they put on the voice, you know how it goes. And then, but they're not really that voice, you know, and you're just, right. you know. Right, it's a veneer, yeah. Yeah, and it's a bit like CBT. It's like so by rote, it's like ABC, and it doesn't, whereas if you're present, it's spontaneous, but yeah. So, so, um, so that to me, yeah, the embodiment of, she was the embodiment of mindfulness. And for me, the teaching flies from, from there. Now, I don't think, in, say, you know, embodying yoga or embodying happiness or in, I don't know, in, in embodying whatever you're interested in automatically makes you a good teacher. But I think it's the bedrock. Solid foundation. Okay, I got it. So what are you most interested in now then? Are you a specialist? Have you got your little, most yoga teachers now have sort of, you know, it's like some particular niche they have, like uh, yoga for the mothers of disabled wombats. You know, they have a particular kind of thing that they do. Um, do you have that or are you that kind of- That person would get a domain name easily for that, I tell you. Disabledwombat.com, I'm so <laughs> getting it. You know, there's someone out there right now getting offended because they have a wombat that has a poorly leg and they're, they're upset. So can we all just take a moment for the, the wombat with okay. the bad leg? Yeah, all right. All right, poor one, man. All right, so this is quickly got through. So do you have a kind of niche area or do you more of a generalist? Like, how do you roll? Yeah, I'm 100% generalist. So it probably works against me all the time, but um, can't be something that I'm... Marketing-wise, most people would suggest not to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, that, but it's not for everyone having a niche, right? It's not for everyone. No, and I think, um, I think this is a more general thing, not just yoga thing, but with social media and internet, um, it works in your favor in anything you do, uh, you know, writer, engineer, what have you, if you're a specialist, because you will get, you know, honed in on. You get very good at a particular thing, yeah. you get known for that particular thing. You're known for that, and, and then you're everywhere, and everyone knows you for that, because information spreads so quickly, and it's so everywhere now, so, um, Whereas, you know, before the information age, actually it probably wouldn't work in your favor because only a few people would know you for your specialism and you'd be stuck. Whereas before the information age, a generalist, you know, would have more contacts and links. Especially now, now with online training, right? So like now there's a hyper niched world where like if you're a yoga teacher with a very particular niche, there's still a lot of people on the internet in the world who will be interested. Whereas if you were in a town before you had to be kind of a generalist because there was only like three yoga classes in all of West London or whatever at one point, right? So you had to cater to all kinds of people. Yeah, there's that. But I also think it relates to, I would call it a problem, but we'll maybe call it a situation of attention spans and okay. just what people are looking for now. So um, but for me to have a five minute platform on anything to sort of give some idea of who I am and what I do, um, is going to be less seen and and and, and um, engaged with than someone who's just immediately you know in, in the moment what they do and what they offer. This is clear. If you've got a wombat with a broken leg, yeah. I'll be able to teach it for you. Yeah. yeah. And I think we live in a very grabby world now where it's uh -huh. like, I want this, I can have this. It's for um, me, I, especially for me. It's just for me. It's, I don't have to deal with any other kinds of people. Just people yeah. like me will be there and I'll get exactly what I want. Yeah, it's a very needy. Everything's very, I need this. Can you deliver this? Mm -hmm. um, and actually, going back to the role of yoga teacher, uh, my role as yoga teacher is not to pander to your need. Um, and if, if I'm not right for you, then 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 there's, I should not um, try and sort of suggest that I have something or that I am something that I'm not. And yeah. There is a tension, isn't there, between the sort of Asian model, I see this in Japanese arts, Chinese arts, all of Indian arts, so I'll say Asian because I've seen it in you know, some of the major cultures, that it's sort of like, look, it's, it's the not the teacher's job to change, 
it's your job to surrender to that art or that teacher or that lineage. And you, it's your problem if you can't. Uh, as opposed to a consumer a a element, which is that sort of entitled, well, I want exactly what I want now delivered to me in the way I want it. The iPhone, it's not the U phone. Per perfectly said. But then also, um, and I agree, coming from you know Indian background, that that's that's although although it's changing there as well now. You know, everything is becoming um, the American way of doing things. But um, but within, um, I'll call it Indian for now rather than Asian because I can't really speak for the other yeah. Asian okay. backgrounds. But but what I think is good and healthy and evolutionary is uh, to have some bit more. Um, bandwidth around that model as well so um which is why i love your podcast and your conversations and also the, the nature of your work because um you're always exploring the two-way relationship so you know it isn't just i'm yoga teacher you're a student um uh, there is a flow and um you know at best isn't it a shame if i aren't if i'm not being guided or learning or gaining something from my students um you know if, if i'm just this sort of solid rock that's got all the answers that doesn't wash either um and therefore knowing what you know the person the student the client the friend needs i've got to be open to that and and yeah so that i think that's a very, really and that's the other relationship i'm always exploring um i do i do this not every night but you know i teach most days and um particularly in the more sort of the kind of conversations or connections i have with students where i know they're not getting from me what they wish some even write to me and say that i've had some really obnoxious emails over my time and, well, you're like this why aren't you like this and you're you know and this is boring uh, whatever and um yeah, it doesn't matter how old you are you get imagine you get, telling the traditional indian yoga teacher they were boring you, <laughs> you imagine that that even being a thing that you would do like i'm i'm, I'm imagining how hard my japanese aikido teachers would hit me if I, if I said that to them. So, you know what, I'm bored of you and your teaching and your class. It just, yeah. th that would be like so unimaginable that you would even do that. I, yeah, and I did reply to that person. Like your entertainment, you know I, what I mean? Uh, yeah. Just another consumer service provider to entertain. Yeah. yeah. Gosh, I think you were there when I wrote my reply. That was, well, yeah. <laughs> I heard her again after 10 years, but um, anyway, her husband's still friends with me. And, anyway, but anyway, so it's like, <laughs> um, yeah, so I think, but, but this is what I consider progress and, you know, related to, you know, the, the kind of events going on now, um, you know, to always reflect back on yourself and, and to look at the flow, you know, and, but, but back to the teacher model and, and um, people do come to us for structure, for guidance, for boundaries, for, for, for knowledge. Um, so yeah, that, that does have a position there. And so, so what I see happening a lot now, um, speaking of UK sort of yoga scene, possibly the embodiment scene, I'm, I'm not sure, and um, definitely in the mindfulness scene is almost too invitational. Right, 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 yeah. right. And so- is, you know, I don't have any authority. I'm not yeah. saying I know anything more than yeah. you. So yeah. that everything's in, if you don't mind, if you, yeah. on the one hand, it's very empowered because it's not the sort of guru model, which is open yeah. to abuse. And we've, you know, yeah. we've talked about this on the show lots of times. Yeah. But on the other hand, it's like you've lost the sort of sense of a hierarchy. Like, hey, you're coming to this person because they know something you don't. Let's be honest about that. And, and maybe I could actually surrender a little bit and take some direction. It's not going to fucking kill me if I don't feel like doing Downward's Dog today and I can do it anyway. 100% yeah there's a, there's, a, there's a lot of, of that and um, again I think that's why as teachers or facilitators I don't think it's enough to you know maybe read an article about it or have a conversation I think we need to be asking ourselves this regularly because that's how you you know that's how you navigate it um, and um, but, you know connected to sort of two invitational is um, we can't let people be stuck with difficulty you know there's that, this big time now in the mindfulness world you know the trauma scene oh my god i said it um but you know it's traumatized like, and said it yeah. i'm traumatized are you traumatized everybody's traumatized oh, 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 oh yeah. my god <laughs> but um i mean how how else do you deal with difficulty if you don't go there and if you're just you know kind of um and you have to, again, it's the mixture of the guidance, but also I know all the difficulties I've had in my life. Um, 
fundamentally at the end of the day i've had to figure it out i've had to sort of be there i it's not through sort of Devia, you're mind. victim blaming poor victims like me you're blaming me I'm for not. my trauma you're so insensitive you're a horrible human being this is a power move i'm doing right now over you but i'm going to pretend i'm a victim oh my god how dare you how dare you yeah, well, you see, oh. if I say I'm coming at it from love and for, for, for wider, longer term view, you know, I can make you comfortable now and happy now and I can be your favorite person and your person that listens. But that's... If You're we're making talking... people weak. That's the thing. If you don't give people difficulty in an intelligent, consensual way, in a graded scale where there's some choice and... If you do not do that, you're making people weak and long term. That is less kind, is less kind. Like, it, like what has gone on that people have decided this is the, you know, someone said to me that they got upset that I challenged them on a question they asked in one of my groups. And they said, I thought your group was a safe space. Yeah. And I was like, well, what do you mean by safe space? Do you mean ethical? Yes. Basically respectful? Yes. Do you mean a place where you won't be upset? Fuck no. That's not my job. My job isn't to provide a space where you won't be upset. Life is upsetting. You will be upset in my classes. It's like, it's a training ground. If you can't handle it in a class, what are you going to do when you're fucking at your dad's funeral trying to read a eulogy? Like, it's like we need training in hardship, not just in comfort. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well said. And I like what you said there about if you can't do it in the, the arena of the training ground. So, you know, that, that should be a, um, ideal sounds the wrong word, but an apt, you know, environment to, to, to go there. And of course, every situation is different. You can't be textbook about it. You know, that obviously, you know, as more than anyone else. You know, so it's also about that, that for me is where the, the real mindfulness comes alive is there's what I've learned. There's, this is either side, you know, student or teacher, um, you know, there's what I'm bringing to the situation, but in that situation, allowing for spontaneity to me is the most, you know that's the biggest learning right there and then what we do in that but if we're coming with these preconceived you know needs wants ideas i'm this you're this a bit of that you know and it's fluid it's fluid it's complex but but that's that's part of the deal i think that's that's when it works